Good afternoon. On behalf of the Hartford County Histor Historical Society of Hartford County, I want to welcome you to our next episode in Brown Bag Lunches, uh, the story of the Lower Susquehanna Heritage Greenway. Our guest today is Bridget Carty. Bridget is the executive director of the Lower Susquehanna Heritage Greenway, and she's going to tell us about the mission of that organization, its history since its beginning in 1992, also a variety of historic sites and locations within the Greenway that they have supported. She's gonna talk about their trail system and some of the activities that they have ongoing uh, to support the Lower Susquehanna Heritage Greenway, her cultural heritage and our natural resources. With that, I'm gonna turn it over to you, Bridget. Thank you, Jackie. Just gonna pull up the slideshow. Yeah, so thank you. Yes, Bridget Carty with the Lower Susquehanna Heritage Greenway. The concept of the Greenway along the shores of the Lower Susquehanna River in Cecil and Hartford counties began as a 38 mile Greenway trail and loop system that would link small communities, recreational areas and the rural countryside, serving as a catalyst for community revitalization. In 1997, the Greenway became a nonprofit and in 2000 became a state certified heritage area whose purpose is to preserve, promote, and interpret the historical, cultural, natural resources in the area by supporting new heritage tourism product development. The LSHG encourages regional economic development through heritage tourism, primarily by supporting public recreation efforts particularly trail development and pub public water access, historic preservation, cultural interpretation, and conservation efforts along the Lower Susquehanna River and the Upper Bay. As a community-based economic development tool, which also helps preserve and enhance the area's heritage, the LSHG primarily serves our citizens, local heritage area tourism entities, and our local governments. But what is a heritage area? Maryland's heritage areas are locally designated and state certified regions where public and private partners make commitments to preserving historical, cultural, and natural resources for sustainable economic development through heritage tourism. There are 13 Maryland state certified heritage areas and they are included in each county. Here's how we fit into the big picture. Here is the LSHG boundary. It encompasses over 45,000 acres in Cecil and Harford counties, extending 12 miles from Glen Cove, located above the Conowingo Dam, to the Chesapeake Bay. There are 8,400 acres of open water and nearly 58 miles of predominantly undeveloped shoreline. The LSHG is also the management entity for the Lower Susquehanna Scenic Byway. Scenic byways preserve and protect the state's most scenic, but often less traveled roads, and similar to heritage areas, promote tourism and economic development. Visit our website to see the great video created by the Maryland Office of Tourism. The LSHG assists with funding and project support, trail development, conservation stewardship, heritage, cultural, recreation, and environmental tourism support, planning, advocacy, partnership building, marketing, regional identity, and public art support. A key role of the LSHG Heritage Area is to provide awareness of heritage area funding opportunities and provide technical support to heritage area partners to encourage project development. Over the past 22 years, LSHG and partner organizations have been involved in over 140 projects. Many projects have benefited from funding through the Maryland Heritage Areas Program, administered by the Maryland Heritage Areas Authority, or MHAA. The program was created to promote community revitalization. Requirements for funding include projects must be located within the heritage area boundary. They need to exhibit clear heritage tourism value. Visitor resources will be created or substantially improved and products will encourage visitation. 
Here are some of the projects that have been supported by Heritage Area Funding. Repairs to the historic Tome Steps in Port Deposit, Rogers Tavern in Perryville, Conquer Point Lighthouse in Haver de Grace, and the Haver de Grace Lock House. Also, Stepping Stone Museum, Rock Run Grist Mill in Susquehanna State Park, and Hosanna School. Now, the Hosanna School project is a multi phase interpretive transition of freedom initiative, highlighting significant people, places, and events. Stories are told through the lens of the African American experience. The project includes a booklet, interactive digital story map, and wayside signage that tells the national narrative of the freedom struggle within the Lower Susquehanna Heritage Greenway. Here are some of our most recent projects the Haver de Grace Colored School Museum and Cultural Center are in need of basement and roofing repairs. And with the completion of the first floor interior space, we'll provide museum and cultural center space to allow them to open their doors to tell the story of the rich and diverse history of the African-American community in the Lower Susquehanna Heritage Greenway region. Susquehanna Wildlife Society, in partnership with the Maryland Zoo, the National Aquarium and DNR, the Wildlife Center will offer visitors an opportunity to experience local wildlife and showcase many species that would not otherwise be seen in the wild. With the outside trail and signage nearly complete, the construction and installation of the exhibits are the last step needed to open the site. The Haver de Grace Maritime Museum has a leaking roof threatening to destroy years of preservation and interpretation to include the recently completed Underground Railroad exhibit, Other Voices of Freedom. The Martha Lewis Skipjack. There are only a small number of skipjacks left in the Chesapeake Bay region, and the Martha Lewis serves as a floating museum, educating the public about the heritage and culture of the Upper Chesapeake Bay, providing a platform of environmental education and Upper Bay exploration, as well as offering public sailings. Sales and rigging are the final components that will be needed to get the skipjack back into service. The Haver de Grace Decoy Museum. R. Madison Mitchell has been referred to as the undisputed dean of decoy carvers. His work is displayed at the Smithsonian Institute as well as other Maryland museums. This project is to protect the actual shop where he honed his craft and shared his knowledge and skill with others. We know that people are spending more time outdoors and are in need of safe and healthy ways to recreate. As mentioned, trails are the core or spine of our heritage area. And to fulfill the mission of becoming a multi-night heritage tourism destination by creating 38 miles of trails to connect the three waterfront communities of Perryville, Port Deposit, and Haver de Grace, the LSHG works with partners to support existing trail development and maintenance, and plan for the creation of new trails. We are currently creating a planning strategy for trail completion and are actively working on more than 36 trail related projects. This is our recently developed trails and heritage resource brochure. It shows how the trails link our heritage resources. Vulcan Quarry Trail, looking at the red line, this is a project many years in the making. In partnership with Vulcan, DNR, and Mason Dixon Trail System, we were able to open the 1.1 mile Susquehanna Hills at Vulcan Quarry Trail in Haver de Grace on April 9th. We have partnered with the city of Haver de Grace to complete the North Park Joe Kay Loop Trail. Currently, we are helping with trail counters and bicycle racks. Bellevue Farm. It is hoped that this property will include an extension of the Lower Susquehanna Heritage Greenway Trail, connecting the city of Haver de Grace to this area known as the Oakington Peninsula. On the Cecil County side, together with Cecil County government and Constellation, we are working on an expansion of the Octorero Creek Trail at Conowingo Park near the dam. We are also working with Cecil County, Vulcan, and the property developer to, uh, on the Granite Cliffs property, 
an LSHD trail easement is now a condition of development on this property, which is located on the bluff above Port Deposit. Our first friends group has been formed with the goal of having a complete walking and hiking connection throughout Haverty Grace. They have started installing LSHD blazes along our trails. We are incredibly fortunate that our trail system co-aligns with six national and regional trails. We participate in trail assessment, development, and promotion. Our heritage area is uniquely positioned to be the gateway to four national trails, the Captain John Smith Chesapeake, the Star Spangled Banner, Washington Rochambeau Revolutionary Route, and our newest trail, the September 11th National Memorial Trail. They are high potential, high priority segments and provide an expanded opportunity for trail development, historic preservation, and expanded public access to recreation and to our water-based activities. For the Captain John Smith Chesapeake National Historic Trail, we are seen as the head of the bay. We were not a part of the initial concept for the Star Spangled Banner National Historic Trail, but as regional advocates, we shared the significant history in our area with the National Park Service. Now we are a priority section of the trail. The Washington Rochambeau Trail is planning for the commemoration of our nation's 250th and is in the process of identifying trail partners and sites and identifying visitor experiences. Here you see the September 11th National Memorial Trail. The Susquehanna River is a critical crossing for this trail. We currently host two annual conservation stewardship efforts. River Sweep, our annual regional shoreline cleanup, which currently we are hosting at 11 sites throughout Harford and Cecil counties. This effort has been taking place for 22 years, involving thousands of volunteers, and over 125.5 tons of debris has been removed from our shoreline and waterways. In partnership with Constellation and Mason-Dixon Trail System, we also host a National Trails Day event to encourage trail usage and provide trail maintenance. We also continue to search for additional ways to encourage and support local conservation and stewardship efforts. Here you'll see some photos of our River Sweep event. And here you'll see one of National Trails Day. The LSHD is also involved in land conservation efforts. We assist in identifying, facilitating lease, easement, and acquisition. The LSHD has helped conserve over 760 acres of land. Through Heritage Area's funding support, the Pride of Baltimore II and the Star Spangled Banner National Historic Trail visited Haverty Grace the weekend of May 7th through 9th, 2021. The LSHG represents regional interest and regional and national planning efforts. We stay up to date on all planning efforts that affect our region. We have been involved in approximately 30 efforts to date. Some plans we develop, some we are consultant, such as the national trails documents. Some we simply review to make sure our regional priorities are accurately reflected and updated if needed. Together with the Maryland Heritage Areas Coalition, the LSHD is engaged in year-round legislative communication, emphasizing the importance of the Heritage Area and the Heritage Areas Program, advocating for program funding and highlighting resulting successes occurring in our community. The LSHD also facilitates regional meetings to promote information sharing, encourage regional collaboration, project assistance, and development. Information regarding funding opportunities, planning initiatives, new project and event development, and organizational needs are shared. These meetings encourage year-round project assistance and collaboration. We help to coordinate regional signage efforts. On the left, you'll see an example of signage that we created. 
In the middle is the state's tourism area and corridor signage program. And on the right is an example of some of the National Historic Trail signage in our area. We help to connect our national and state partners to our local heritage area partners. And finally, an increasingly important part of our heritage area efforts is supporting and promoting projects that interpret our culture through public art. We have helped support the Have to Grace Public Art Plan and are now assisting with implementation through projects such as Big Fish School of Fish. So thank you all for your time and for allowing me to present this information. Feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Well, thank you so much, Bridget. That's really been very helpful for me to educate me about all the things that are going on in the lower Susquehanna heritage area. Um, could you talk to me a little bit about what are the, you see as the biggest challenges facing um, the implementation about facing the Greenway going forward? Absolutely. Can you see that? Did I share yes. that? Yes, ma'am. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. So one of the biggest challenges is crossing the river. Um, a key issue for the Greenway Trail system is, is just that. Ideally, the crossing would have two pedestrian bridges, one from Haver de Grace to Perryville, one from Port Deposit to Susquehanna State Park to, to close in the loop trail. Um, short term, it was determined that a water taxi would be a great solution. Uh, Midterm, a low level bridge between Port and Susquehanna State Park. And then, of course, long term, a new bridge between Haver de Grace and Perryville. That was determined um, in the early 2000s. And of course, it's an expensive and a lofty goal. But as I mentioned, there's been a significant amount of national investment that has occurred in the area. Let me see, there we go. So in light of this, there's been a, region, uh, a recent growing of groundswell of interest support and momentum for this crossing. There's been strong partner support and a lot of enthusiastic crossing related discussions. Uh, and the effort is being championed by local, regional and national partners. And here is a great example, an area that looks remarkably like our area uh, and the connection between Harford and Cecil counties. This is actually the walkway over the Hudson in Poughkeepsie, New York. Who funded the walkway over the Hudson? I believe it was a nonprofit organization that started the effort. Okay. If you were gonna envision, um, we've talked about crossing the river. Oh, if I wanna get a copy of that trail brochure you talked about, where would I go to get a copy of that? Um, it, is, it is on our website. And we also try to keep it stocked at the visitor centers. Very good. Very good. Um, can you talk a little bit, you, you touched on, um, what organizations are within your partnership um, already that you, you talk about the ground round table conversations, the round table meetings, what organizations are already involved? Yeah, so anyone that would like to be a partner, we would love to have as a partner. <laughs> um, so we have the, the, the tourism entities, we have the local museums, we have um, anyone in, in planning, local elected officials, um, anyone and everyone that is in the heritage area or related to the work or projects in the heritage area, we welcome as a partner. Um, so do you have a membership program for individuals or is it just organizations that participate? Yes, so we currently don't have a membership program. Our organization is, is a bit different in that we would be competing with our local partners uh, if we had a membership program. So we, um, we engage our partners. Uh, of course, we have a database when we need to do uh, conservation stewardship efforts to, to get volunteers to come out. But in terms of membership, currently we don't have one. Um, and most heritage areas do not have a membership program. So, but if I wanted to get involved as an individual, the way to do that then would be to watch for your river cleanup days, uh, to watch for your trail days, 
and and try to participate in those particular activities. Absolutely. And and or email me and and ask to be added to our database. And as we grow and and efforts um, expand and increase, we will certainly be inviting you. Okay. Um, what was or did you all talk? You talked a little bit about Bellevue Farm. I'll point out to. Um, those who are viewing it, we uh, were fortunate enough to have Iris Barnes speak with us uh, in a previous episode about the role of Bellevue Farm in uh, the Underground Railroad um, and its connection to the Christiana uprising, um, which has interesting ties to Harford County in terms of many of the participants in that and catalysts for that were from Harford County, even they went over to Delaware. What was a, what was uh, your organization's role in the ac the county's acquisition of the Bellevue Farm? So that was a part of our plan 30 years ago. So what has been um, a, a very important role that we have played is this planning or this planning effort that these visionaries had 30 years ago to create this uh, greenway concept and along with it, a management plan for the area. And so with that, to become a certified heritage area, all the local governments had to adopt the management plan into their comprehensive plans. So that allows us opportunities. For instance, when I mentioned Granite Cliffs in Cecil County, as a developer purchases a property um, and wants to move forward with the development, we are consulted um, to see if our plan has a trail system through that area. Um, and for instance, in that case, um, we were allowed the, the um, an easement as part of a condition of development because of the visionaries 30 years ago creating this trail system. So similar to Bellevue, it was a part of the planning process 30 years ago that this um, would be the southernmost part of the Hartford County portion of the Lower Susquehanna Heritage Greenway Trail. Can you talk a little bit about the other ways in which um, Greenway organizations are important to local governments, to local communities? In, and there's been a lot of lot more emphasis lately in Harford County about preserving natural resources, about respecting and encouraging the development of our cultural heritage. Can you talk about how Greenway programs nationally are part of this effort and how they can be of particular interest to both citizens and uh, those advocates for uh, those kinds of activities. Yeah, so as you mentioned at the beginning, uh, Jackie, part of the reason we were created and what why Greenways are created are as a conservation strategy. So area is, um, is identified by the local community of uh, and evaluate it for importance for future preservation and conservation. So that, that is an important part of what we do. Uh, and not every heritage area is a greenway. Um, so not every heritage area has that uh, component necessarily to them, but as a greenway and a heritage area, it is very important for us to be involved in environmental and conservation efforts. Um. I'm, of course, today representing the Historical Society. Um, can you, but can you talk a little bit about the the uh, the conservation side of your activities um, and uh, the, your partnership with the Susquehanna Wildlife Society? Yeah, so our partnership with Susquehanna Wildlife Society is um, is helping them to secure funding um, to be, to be able to open the buildings. So we were able to help them with some funding to as they were developing their outside trail uh, to do some signage uh, with some state funding. All of this is state funding. We are just a small nonprofit, um, but have, uh, but part of our role is to help our local uh, partners uh, gain access to that uh, Maryland dedicated funding, which is a Maryland incentive zone as a heritage area. So we were able to help them get some funding for that. And then also working with them to help get some funding to open up uh, the interior, develop the interior exhibits to actually be able to open the building itself. Are the trails there open now? I do not know if they, I, I believe so, but I know that they are currently installing the signage okay. that accompanies the trail. I do not know if it's open to the public on a regular basis okay. yet, but I know it will be like we're on the cusp. Okay. And do you have a sense of when the 
Uh, the exhibit building, the buildings might be open to the public. I, it's, I don't, but I know that they all, they have the designs, they have the plans they're working with, graphic designer for, uh, and they have an idea of what well, they know, how many exhibits they want and what they want in each exhibit. And as I mentioned, they are working with um, the zoo and the aquarium, which I think is phenomenal because it'll be an original site like um, no other in this heritage area. So it will it will be great for um, our local citizens, and it will be fabulous for uh, for visitors as well. Yeah, I I find it very encouraging. I was I was excited to hear you talk about that because I think that talks about. Um, the connection, along with this, the Star Spangled Banner Trail, um, the John <clears throat> John Smith Trail, all those things speak to our increasing um, importance, if you will, in this region, um, and the recognition by regional organizations of the resources that are available here in Hartford County, um, as well as <clears throat> the commitment of folks like yourself. Um, to helping to preserve our cultural and natural heritage. So I want to thank everybody for listening with us today, and we hope that you've enjoyed this discussion of the Lower Susquehanna Heritage Greenway. Um, and I want to thank Bridget Carty for all of the information that she's imparted to us. That's certainly been an opportunity for me to learn, and I think also hopefully um, it's an opportunity for you. If you've enjoyed this event, I'd encourage you, please, uh, to consider making a donation to the Historical Society of Harford County. Uh, our our, our uh, website is www.harfordhistory.org. Um, I would also like to encourage you to visit our YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel is um, available through our website and it's um, um, Historical Society of Harford County. We have previous episodes on Bellevue Farms, as I mentioned. Um, we have a previous episode on the Star Spangled Banner Trail and Harford County's role, particularly Harvard Grace's role in the War of 1812. And we have a previous episode uh, which where we interviewed uh, the executive director of the Martha Lewis uh, Foundation who are working so hard to restore that vessel to its um, to working order so that they can bring it uh, back to Haverty Grace and begin to offer um, trips um, and educational opportunities uh, on that skipjack. I also want to advertise for those, for all of you, um, the additional activities that are coming up with the Historical Society on August the 20th, 2022, Todd Holt Holden will be at Brooms Blooms uh, Dairy at 4 p.m. You can enjoy ice cream and hear um, <clears throat> Todd's discussion and his many, many stories from his years um, as a photographer and a reporter for the Aegis. He's a ton, uh, he's an absolute treasure of Harford County's history stories. I'm um, gonna encourage you to register for that event. There is a small um, admission fee. Um, you can register at the website, www.harfordhistory.org. And next month, um, perhaps by coincidence, perhaps by not, we will be discussing the Washington Rochambeau Trail through Harford County. I want to um, encourage all of you to come to that. Um, our guest for that event uh, will be um, uh, Dr. Iris DeRode. Dr. DeRode, um, was able to locate uh, the uh, original diary of an adjutant general to uh, General Rochambeau, who kept a daily diary during his time here in America during the revolution. Um, he previewed the trail, the uh, road through Harford County uh, before General Rochambeau came down about a year earlier, and then he came back to Harford County with uh, General Rochambeau. So Dr. DeRode will be telling us um, about the, the, the Adjutant General's experiences here in Harford County and um, alongside uh, Rochambeau and Washington uh, on, their march to, on their march to Yorktown uh, and the sur surrender of 
uh, Cornwallis. So I thank you all for joining us today. Visit the website www.harvardhistory.org for more information. Thank you very much.